This is one on one. Everything in this program is dedicated to a very important topic women in leadership. A woman who happens to be, or a leader who happens to be a very strong woman right now. We have in the studio uh, Michelle Sikirka, been with us many times, president and CEO, New Jersey Business and Industry Association. How are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great. We just, you just had, we did, and some of us got a chance to participate in an absolutely great leadership event involving women. Talk about it. Yeah, so it was our fifth annual Women Business Leaders Forum. We had over 500 incredible women. Steve, you were there. The energy, the passion, the momentum. I mean, it was contagious, infectious, and there's still social media going on weeks later. What do you think it was about? Why did oh. it cost it? Well, first of all, um, we've led up to this. So each year we talk about, you know, what's another aspect of, of your own self-development as a female leader that you need to get to? And a few years ago, we talked about empowering yourself. And then we talked about empowering others. And now this was all about bringing it home. And we said, this is about owning your success. And what does that mean? And it means, you know, being present in the game. It means really unleashing your capacity, your ability, recognizing where your vulnerabilities are, and then leaning into those vulnerabilities and not letting them get in your way. So when we talk about women's leadership, we talk very intently and with purpose about building hardcore leadership skills and then creating the visibility to the women who have those skills so we can advance mm. into the C-suite and the boardroom. But, you know, Michelle, what's fascinating to me is um, I had the chance to moderate a forum with some pretty great women yes. on executive presence. Mm -hmm. And there was a whole discussion, what is executive presence? Does it look different in men and women? Should it? What's, what is executive presence first and second? Any difference between men and women executive presence? Well, certainly it's about um, having confidence, uh, knowing your stuff so that you can feel confident when you show up, and again, being present in the moment. So when you walk in that room, like have your A game every time. Be on every single time. Um, and don't let folks you know, get you off your game. So difference between men and women, um, harder for women. women Why? Because we're not there yet, Steve. Um, you know, every day, you know, I hear from women leaders across the state about how they sit in rooms with men, and sometimes it's obvious that they're in the room, and other times the women have to still fight their way into the conversation in the room. Do you? I've never seen you. Well, put it this way. I don't know. It's like a duck who looks so smooth. We mm -hmm. don't know what's going on underneath. Mm -hmm. You've never, ever, in all the years we've known each other, it, it never looked to me like you were struggling to be a strong presence in a conversation. That's my perspective and perception. Mm -hmm. Yours is? Well, thank you. I would say it comes with maturity and it comes with experience. What I mean by maturity is age, okay? The longer, the longer you're in the game of being in rooms where you have to command an audience or command attention, the longer you're in that space, the more confident you get doing it. You think I get up and I'm not nervous times when I speak? Oh, hell yeah, I'm nervous, right? Still? S yeah. Absolutely. Same here sometimes. But you know what? You know when I'm not nervous? When I'm 100% prepared and when I'm really passionate about what I'm talking about. If I am in the space that I'm comfortable in, then I can easily bring my, my A game. If I'm not prepared to be in that space, I'm going to be a little challenged. That's when I'm nervous. So I really shouldn't be nervous if I know what I'm doing, right? Mm, interesting. The other piece about this is the whole question of the number of women in the C-suite, if you will. Yeah. Are we dramatically better than we were five or ten years ago? In the C-suite, we're still struggling. It's very, very slow go in the C-suite. Even the succession planning is still struggling. The good news is in the boardroom. We're making more advances in the boardroom. What's the difference? So, well, the boardroom is who's sitting on the board of the big companies across the state of New, Jer uh, well, state of New Jersey and the entire country, right? So the good news is um, in 2018, a recent report showed that 40% of all board seats, so this is public, private, you know, all board seats, um, went to 40% were women. That sounds great. Mm. Fortune 500, though, is only 22%. That's it. That's it, 22%. And again, the C-suite is even slower. <clears throat> Statistics tell us, though, that the pace we are on right now, because we've accelerated the pace, that we'll have parity by 2025. That's only about five and a half years That's away. Right. So That's slow right. and steady does win the race. Do you think there's anything different? Uh, mm -hmm. Women in leadership in, we happen to be taping in New Jersey, we tape in New York as well with our partners at WNET. Do you think there's anything unique or special about women who are leaders based in New Jersey versus anywhere else in the nation? Oh, you happen to be one of them. Well, I mean, Jersey girls got it all. Uh, you see, I, I was hoping you'd go there. Do you think Jersey girls who are Jersey women, Jersey women leaders, you have certain advantages? You know, we tend to be bolder in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> um, so for that 
exact point, I would say I think we get a leg up. But you want to know something? We are working hard to create the environment here. I want to see New Jersey be a lead state on women's leadership. That's why we do that forum. That's why we bring those women together. Right. You know, number one, not just to advance them to the C-suite in the boardroom and create the opportunities and the visibility. Number two, to say that we got it going on in the state of New Jersey, that our companies here get it. Because you know what? When women and diversity is in the C-suite in the boardroom, the company does better. There's an absolute business case for diversity. It's not just because it's the right thing. business case? Absolutely. It's not just about the right thing to do, OK? Women who start companies, entrepreneurs, female entrepreneurs, first year, 10% better performance, OK? Mm. Companies that have more than 50% or at least 50% of women in leadership positions have better return on investment, better net profit at the end of the year, OK? So think about it. Also, consumers are looking at companies that have diversity in the C-suite in the boardroom. That, and without it, if a company does not, are they putting themselves at a competitive disadvantage? I would say yes, because the, the statistics show that when you have women in leadership and diversity in the C-suite in the boardroom, the company performs better. Business case. Let's try this, a couple more items. So um, I've often, you know, and I've talked about this, by the way, this publication, we cross-promote with uh, New Jersey Business. And I'm proud to have a column in there um, on leadership every month. But I'm also curious about this. One of the things we talked about in the forum that I moderated for you and your colleagues at BIA was also about the old expression or the question, should a woman in a leadership position, when did she, quote, act like a man? And when I first heard that, I thought, what does that mean? And then I was like, are you trying to say being more assertive? That's what that means? Please tell me we don't use that expression anymore. So there was this whole debate for a long time about the word aggressive. You know, oh, she's too aggressive. And then there was the whole persona of what does that mean? You By know? the way, were you ever accused of that? Yes, I was. OK, go ahead. I was. And my answer to that is um, I am proactive and I'm passionate. <laughs> and, and assert, OK, I don't want to play a word game, but there's a difference between assertive. By the way. Aggressive in the eyes of one is assertive to another, but the bottom line is you have to be heard. Yes, but there's ways of, there's ways of doing it. So I don't like the word aggressive, because to me, the word in and of itself, aggression. It, That's it not you. No, and it has this sense of, like, coming at you. When I say I'm proactive, OK, that means I'm ahead. That means that, uh, again, I'm bringing my confidence, and I have something to say, and I'm going to say it in the right way. I choose my words very, very seriously, and I choose my tone and tenor very, very seriously. Mm. You know, if there's a situation where I have to be a little more assertive to get attention, I'll do it, but I'll do it in the right way. But I'm not going to come barreling into, into a room. And you just don't do that. There's no need to do that. For men or for women. Correct. For a leader. A leader okay. should never, ever. And uh, that is why we talk about leadership all the time. Michelle yes. and I have countless conversations <laughs> off the air as well as on. Thank you, Michelle. Check out, by the way, this entire program dedicated to women in leadership, women's leadership. Um, important stuff. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thank you, Michelle. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Resources, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association, the law firm of Gibbons PC, the Northward Center. MD Advantage Insurance Company of New Jersey, and by ADP. Promotional support provided by NJ.com, and by Tap Into TV. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.